Hey everybody, welcome to another Ark Survival Ascended Tips and Tricks video. My name's Ben and today I've got 15 quick tips that you might not know, including how to fix your frame rate and screen tearing, as well as some hidden inventory controls that you might have missed. I play on the Xbox version of the game, but all of these also apply to PS5 and PC. So first up, a great little tip that's been around for years, but a lot of people just don't know. For the longest time, I thought you only ever got off the right side of your dyno and you spent endless amounts of time positioning yourself carefully so you wouldn't fall off a cliff when you were getting off your dinosaur in some sort of awkward position. But you can just get off either side of your dyno by pushing the stick or the direction keys to the side you want to get off. You can just get off the left side or the right side. I don't know why this one particularly eluded so many people, myself included, for so long, but it's very useful to know. It's just that the default, if you don't press a direction, is always on the right hand side of the dyno. If you're struggling to find some very early game metal in order to get your smithy, your furnace going, maybe some metal tools then try mining these small round rocks you find in the coastal areas and they'll actually give you more metal than other normal rocks you can see from these small rocks here we're on two times harvest right here and with this metal pick we're getting two to four raw metal per small rock in just a couple of hits Whereas if we run over and start hitting a big rock like this, it takes ages just to get a little bit. We actually got one piece of metal from that whole big rock with seven or eight smashes. And again, big rock here. If we go and start hitting this one, you get lots of flint, a little bit of stone. And we didn't even get a single piece of metal from that whole big rock. So small round rocks on the beaches. Great way for a little bit of metal. So one of the nice new features that you probably already knew about in Ark Ascended is that you can track recipes. So you see if I select an engram here, and on Xbox, I click in the left stick and it will track that on the right hand side of the screen, show how many I can craft with the current resources I have and how many of those resources I have in my inventory. But something else that I just learned you can actually do is you can track resources on their own, not just recipes. So if I go here and I click in on this metal, it's actually going to show me how much metal I have in my inventory on the right hand side of the screen. I can do that with wood, with flint, with stone, whatever. You can have a whole bunch of these on the right. So you can run around, do some farming, and it will show exactly how many of you have. And then if I go and collect some, you'll see that going up once we get a bit more metal or stone. You see we get a live count on the right hand side of the screen showing us exactly what we're carrying. If you want to get rid of these again, you either just click the same button again on them or you can move over and click the little bin icon next to each thing that you have tracked. Another handy control to know about in your inventory or any inventory is the auto stack button. If you want to restack some items, say in this feeding trough, get them all back to max stack size, go up to this double window picture here that says auto stack, click that and it's just going to restack everything neatly together. You can also do this in your inventory if it's a mess of little bitty split piles and you just want to get everything stacked back together click it in your inventory and everything is stacked to the minimum amount of stacks possible another handy thing to know about in your inventory as well as being able to press lb or l1 on xbox or playstation to move everything back and forth between an inventory so that you can also make folders of items and then those folders are excluded from that move all function so this can be really useful perhaps in pvp if you're trying to loot someone's body quickly and often particularly on console when you use the lb control to move things back and forth between inventories the first time you click it it moves all your stuff across and then you click it again and it will bring everything back and if you don't necessarily want to have a split second where you've dumped all of your inventory into a corpse you can put your important things into this folder so if we just drag a couple of bits over there for example we can see now if we click on this we've got the wood torch and the trank arrows in there and then if we click the transfer all lb on xbox l1 on playstation it'll move everything across but not the stuff in the stuff folder and again for bringing it back it will do the same if i did open this folder and then press that button it would move just those three things across and then move them back again by the way if you want to delete any folders you created it's not particularly obvious if you hover over them on console and press left trigger or l2 on a playstation then it will just delete that you don't have to empty it first it'll just empty everything out into your inventory. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and finding it at all useful, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content and help us finally hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. 
Next up is the extended hotbar. You can activate this quickly on the fly by holding down LB and up on the D-pad. That's LB on Xbox, L1 on PlayStation. That'll activate this hotbar. You can see down the bottom here. Now by holding down LB and then left or right on the D-pad, I can scroll through everything in my inventory that could normally be applied to a hotbar. So you won't see your resources down there, but anything like building structures, items, weapons, tools, stuff like that will all be down there. I find this really handy to jump into when I'm doing a bit of building because I can quickly scroll along, particularly on console and place my walls, foundations, whatever, have it all there without having to keep going in and out of this menu and placing stuff into my tiny hotbar. And then once you're done, just hold down LB and up on the D-pad again, and it will go back to the default hotbar. So something I've mentioned before in videos is how you can equip a torch to your belt. And on console, that's just by equipping the torch and then pressing left trigger, or that's gonna be L2 on PlayStation. You see now I've got a torch attached to a rather dangerous place on the front of my trousers. But did you know you could also attach a torch to a dinosaur saddle? So grab a torch, go up to a dinosaur's inventory and then drag and drop it onto the saddle and you'll see that it actually mounts it onto the saddle so you can ride around with the torch going just behind you or in front of you depending on what dino you're riding. If you want to get rid of this again, just go into the dinosaur's inventory, hover over the saddle, you can see at the bottom there it says the controls remove skin is X on Xbox, press that and it will de-equip the torch from the dino saddle. When you're out and about and you're harvesting or running around and you run out of stamina, you can actually get it back more quickly by laying completely prone. Click and hold in the right stick on console and you'll go prone and then you'll get your stamina back super quickly. One of the new features that Ark Survival Ascended brings along is the addition of wild baby dinosaurs, which are pretty common. You can see like this trike here has a little baby triceratops running around in the bushes with it. And what you probably know is if you kill the parent, then you can just tame these for free. You walk up, press the button and imprint them and you got yourselves a nice easy tame. It's not the most efficient way to get dinos of a high level, but it's certainly a very quick and easy way to get some early game tames. But what these babies are also very useful for is being a supply of prime meat. They drop lots of prime meat and the small ones you can even pick up with your Arge or other various flyers and then just fly off with them and take them back to your base to be brutally killed at your leisure. Bonus points if you manage to find a baby Fiomia, the piggies which normally give loads of normal meat, the same boost also applies to prime meat. You kill one of those babies, you get an absolute ton of raw prime meat from them. You can see here from this trike that we're going to harvest just with a metal pick, we've got 15, 20, 24 on two times harvest there, just with a normal 100% metal pick. From a baby piggy, we'd expect to get two to three times that amount. If like me, you want to try out using maybe a few mods, but without completely changing or breaking the game or making it too easy, one really nice quality of life thing that I've found is finding something that gives you some reusable tools. I've been using one called Utilities Plus, but there are other similar mods out there, and this gives you a reusable torch, a reusable bowler, and a few other reusable items. In particular, the reusable bowler I found super useful for the early game particularly when you spend a lot of time being killed by raptors and other small animals just means you can craft a bowler and just keep using it over and over rather than having to craft loads of them and have them sit in your inventory and run out when you're trying to bowler four or five raptors that have come to attack you at the same time Definitely a nice little quality of life mod that doesn't really change too much in the game, but just helps you out with things like bowlers, reusable parachutes, reusable grapples, and a reusable torch. If you want to access console commands and you're playing on Xbox or PlayStation, then you just need to go into your settings, go to the advanced tab, and then on the left hand side, you can see here the console access option. You need to have that selected to on. Once you've enabled this in your settings, then just press the pause button and you'll see in the bottom left of the screen, the control for opening the console command menu. Then just type the commands into here and press start to activate them. Once you've entered a few commands, you'll see a list of the previously entered commands and you can select those more easily to quickly reuse them. There's a few different console commands that can be pretty useful both on single player and on online servers. One that I found really useful helps with running through the grass, when, particularly when you're in FPP view, your camera seems so low to the ground. And admittedly, it is quite tall grass. If we go down and look at our character, he is pretty well submerged in that. But if you prefer running around in FPP, it does get a bit annoying running around like this all the time. 
and as we all know from Jurassic Park, stay out of the long grass. So if you want to help with this but not completely get rid of grass, which I think just looks terrible, then in the console command section, you can use the command grass.sizeScale 0.5, and that's going to make all of the grass half the size that it currently is. You can see instantly it's all scaled back to half size. It's not completely gone if we got rid of that completely, which you can do. It will help with your frame rate but it just looks a bit rubbish. Now it's just made that a bit of a better height so we can run around in FPP and it not be quite so painful. It also helps you see a bit more easily where these bushes are without it feeling very cheaty. There's also a few console commands you can use to improve your game's performance. If you open the console command menu back up, first up, if you want to view your FPS, use the stat space FPS command. Enter that, you can see in the right hand side of the screen here, we've now got this tiny little FPS counter, which is pretty low. What we can then do is we can remove our clouds and our fog, which are both pretty useful for increasing frame rate. If I get rid of the clouds by typing r.volumetric cloud space zero into here, you can see that on screen, the clouds are all disappear and our frame rate is going to go up massively uh, instantly there. And then we're also going to get rid of fog, which does change the lighting a bit, but I don't think it looks too bad. If we open up the console commands again, we're going to use r.volumetric fog space zero select that and there we go that's our fog off and that is again going to help a little bit with our frame rate now one other issue that you might be seeing a lot of depending on what monitor you play on is screen tearing you won't really see it on the recording on the video because it's just being captured by my cap card and on this monitor i'm playing on at my pc which is a 144 hertz monitor it's not an issue i see but when i take my xbox downstairs and i play on my ancient tv which is just 60 hertz i actually see quite a lot of screen tearing and the screen tearing if you're not familiar is where you see the sort of flickering horizontal lines across the screen particularly often when you're moving left and right and it kind of things get a little bit out of phase and that's caused basically by your frame rate trying to go higher than the hertz of your monitor. So when I'm downstairs on the TV in the living room and my frame rate is trying to go above 60, then you can see instances of screen tearing. Now, what you can do to mitigate this, you can see my frame rate here is going way over 60 when I'm up in the air. When I'm down the ground, it doesn't matter so much, but when I'm flying around, it's often over 60, going up to 80 or so. So if we go back into our console command menu, hit pause, press the back button, you can see in the bottom left. And in the console command menu, you can see here, we're going to enter r.vsync space one press start on that and that is going to enable vsync and what vsync will essentially do is cap your frame rate at the hertz that it thinks your monitor can handle and what it's actually done here is capped it at 60 and when i do this on my 60 hertz monitor downstairs this gets rid of all these screen tearing because the frame rate no longer will go above that 60 cap i find this a really nice balance of settings i don't really like to turn off any more stuff you can get rid of all sorts of foliage and that kind of thing but i think if you turn off any more including shadows and foliage then the game just starts to look a bit rubbish this i think still looks really nice and the frame rate for me is absolutely fine so hopefully you also find it useful especially ah oh, this lovely short grass so that's everything for today i've got a bunch of other arc ascended tips and tricks videos already live with more planned for the future so make sure you drop a sub if you want to catch all of those when they go out thanks so much for watching my name's ben we are the beard guys and i'll see you next time